It's time for your daily dose of all things Chicago sports. This is the Daily Score. Now, here's your host, Mark Grody. Hello and welcome into the Daily Score. I am Mark Grody. Today's show is originating from NBC Sports Chicago. I just got done talking about the Bears with our good friend Ruthie Polinski over here. So maybe you could find that. You could check that out as well. But... Let's talk about the Bears, and specifically one of the guys that we are going to hear from today is the Bears' second-year safety, Jaquan Brisker, because he was on the score on the Bernstein and Holmes show, which is expertly produced by our producer, Ray Diaz, and he tipped me off to some pretty good audio that was on their show. And one of the things that Brisker was talking about, and this is the way veterans talk, and I don't know that you can consider Jaquan Brisker a veteran in a second year, but he, he's good at talking the part. And he talked about accountability. And just as a as a um, intro to this, he was talking specifically about the communication breakdown that led to that Jordison, or excuse me, Jordan Addison touchdown on Sunday. Defense, like the safeties had to, you know, put the people in the right position. I know they say the middle backer and things like that, but I feel like it's safety too. So I told the guys, you know, I felt like that definitely should have been on me. But, you know, our middle backer, you know, makes that call. And we just got to refer the call, you know, to the players and things like that, get everybody on the same page. So just got to play the call and things like that and, you know, play the right coverage. And we're good. Yeah, I'm curious about the process then. So you're saying that the middle backer, who obviously has the speaker in the helmet, who is getting the call and then communicating the call, is there a chain after that to make sure everybody can confirm that everybody knows what's going on, or is it still kind of chaotic pre-snap? Just depending on if the call gets in fast enough, if we could you know, hear the call and you know, refer it back to everybody also. Especially, you know, during that draft, you know, they're trying to move, they're trying to go tempo, Mm -hmm. you know, the crowd loud and things like that. So we just got to, like I said, you know, as a safety, you know, no matter what, I put it on myself to get that call, you know, the other players and make sure we're playing the right defense. That's why I told them yesterday, just the accountability that we all have to each other. I felt like if anything, if anybody put the blame on himself, it would have to be me to be able to see, hear, and then transfer the call to everybody, be on the same page, even though we got, you know, some bets and things like that. And I just think that's the safety's job to be able to, you know, do that. Yeah, I mean, that is the essence of accountability from Jaquan Brisker right there. And, yeah, I mean – Look, I mean, we're, we're breaking apart a play defensively that did not go well for them. But on the whole, Bears' defense has been pretty impressive lately. The numbers that were at the beginning of the season, how god-awful and putrid they were, they're not as bad. Now, they're still more like middle-of-the-pack defense now in terms of statistics. And, you know, I mean, they're not there yet, but we're starting to see playmakers – making blaze you know tj edwards i thought had the, probably the best game for the bears on defense been waiting to hear his number called a little bit more so that was promising um you know we saw zach pickens break through and stuff a run at one point in time the bears were terrific against the run so that those are some very heartening things that you know because there's nothing as frustrating as it is for all of us to agonize over offense and quarterbacks Truly, man, there is nothing worse than when your defense just blows. And we've seen that in the past. Most recently, the Mel Tucker era where they gave up the back-to-back 50 burgers. I think it was Green Bay and New England. So, And just think about how frustrating and god-awful that was when your defense is a sieve. So it doesn't look like – I thought it was going to be that bad when the season started, but they are starting – not a finished product by any means, but they're starting to come together. So that's really good. I don't know if you guys heard it on the score yesterday, but um, we had Jalen Johnson on the Parkins and Spiegel show as he is every Monday, right around five o'clock. Great day to have him on after the games. And one of the things that Jalen Johnson was talking about was just being really real that while he'd love to stay in Chicago, you know, maybe for his whole career and he's bought a house here and, you know, it's the team that drafted him, so he feels that loyalty or allegiance. But he was like, he he said he would understand 
if the Bears were to trade him ahead of the trade deadline, which come which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, and basically, he referenced Roquan Smith and Robert Quinn as reasons. You know, basically said, look, if they could trade those guys, they could trade anybody. And there was nothing in what Jalen Johnson said that he was asking for a trade or wanting to be traded or pushing the contract extension. It was just a very mature answer and a very realistic answer. And I think he used the word exempt as in he's not exempt (laughs) from being talked about as a trade ship or even being traded. That said, Jaquan Brisker again, on the Bernstein and Holmes show, was talking about what Jalen Johnson was saying and hoping that that guy sticks around with the Bears. Imagine a team at one and five, you start to look around. People know who's where on their deals, right? Does that kind of creep in a little bit? No, as a player on my end, I guess, you know, looking at the history of it, I guess it it could creep in for, you know, some of the players and things like that, but which I shouldn't because, you know, I feel like, you know, Jalen and, you know, other guys are, you know, great players and they pour a lot into the, you know, Chicago Bears and their heart and soul, especially Jalen. You know, he won the top corners in the league. Like, he has a lot of production. If you watch the games, 33's barely getting the ball thrown to him. Right. He's shutting down one side of the field. And I'm being completely honest with you. He's a great teammate. He's a great leader. He's not a rah-rah guy, but – He's a great teammate, and when he leaves, you hear his voice, and then you obviously see his play. He's a great technician. He's a you know a great technician. He's a great corner. Had great ass. Play with great energy. And this year, and last year, he showed that he could you know play the run also. So I just feel like he's a great corner, and I see him being you know a bear you know forever. Just you know the same with Eddie Jackson. You know I see him being a a bear for life. Especially he's been here for you know seven years. Pours heart and soul, and he's a playmaker. And guys like that you see in the Bears, like even back in the day, you see guys like Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, you know, Charles Tillman. Those guys stay with the Bears forever. And it's just like you got to, you know, pay those guys the same duels with these guys too. Now I feel like we got to go back to the old generation where we have loyalty to the players. We keep players on the same team, just like, you know, Ray Lewis and, you know, Ed Reed and or the Troy Palomalos and, you know, James Ferris and things like that. Those guys were on the same team for years, you know, for years, and they won Super Bowls together. So just think, you know, people got to keep that in mind. You know, just have loyalty, trust in the guys that you know that have been here for a while. I'll say that. Love Jaquan Brisker's sense of history, first of all. And... Doesn't it, doesn't it feel like Eddie Jackson has is already qualified as a bear for life? <laughs> He's been here forever, man. It, the, I mean, really, in football terms, Eddie Jackson has been here since 2017. He's kind of like been with all of us. Like, there's the fans, there's the media, and there's Eddie Jackson. You know what I mean? Like, we've all been through this Mitch Trubisky, Justin Fields, Matt Nagy, Matt Eberflus roller coaster. And Eddie Jackson has been around for all of it. You know what I you know what I think though about Jalen Johnson? I think Jalen Johnson will get an extension. I think that he is uh he's gonna get a two or three year contract extension. That's my guess. I just I can't imagine like you you have to look at your valuable chips on the team when you are bad and you have to consider the possibility of trading them and teams might be calling. So of course, Ryan Poles is not just going to say, no, we're not doing it and just dismiss it out of hand. But I also think that this is the second year of a rebuild and eventually you got to start to make sure that you have a core. And I think that Jalen Johnson, considering his age Um, and his skills and what he means to the locker room. I think that that's kind of, you know, he's not a captain, but he's definitely a guy that people respect. I think that he could be a a good piece for the Bears for the next, you know, two, three, four years, whatever it is. So to me at this point, it would not make, unless you you could rip off a team and get a first, second, or even third round pick for Jalen Johnson, then forget it. Cause I think probably the best you're going to get is maybe a fourth round pick or beyond. Um, I'd rather not trade him for a fourth round pick. I'd rather keep Jalen Johnson. Um, Chase Daniel, former bears quarterback also was on the score with Parkinson and Spiegel. And he confirmed kind of like what we all saw in that game on Sunday against Minnesota, 
the Bears were not prepared for the pressure. Here's Jake. Listen, I, I said it last week when I came on the show was uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Chicago Bears deploy their package against this blitz-heavy Brian Flores defense. And from the first play of the game, guys, we're in empty protection. We're in empty formation, five wide, and he just gets absolutely smoked. Like to me, it's like what? Like what are you doing? Like you know they're going to be a pressure package. You have five five blockers, and Justin, listen, Justin knows that. At the end of the day, it falls on the quarterback to get the ball in their hands. But why in the world are you starting an empty versus a six man pressure team that they? I mean, they're pressuring like forty eight percent of the time, which is easily the most in the National Football League. And everyone wants to break down that play and and what happened. And I just think you had a running back all the way outside uh, DJ Moore, and I think he just ran the wrong route. He ran a hitch route. I mean, I looked at that play over and over and over. DJ Moore breaks out. I've never seen a hitch in a little stick route where you break out before. I think it was just a mental error by the running back. On the, fir- so on the first spooked. play of the game, on the first play of the game, someone ran the round, wrong route in the scripted place. That's that's what it looked like to right. me. I mean, that's literally what it looked like to me because when 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 they motioned out and when they were when they got an empty, I'm like, okay. Most teams like to do that, but it's a different type of cover zero. A lot of people uh, like realize and see when they when they hear cover zero, it's man to man. No, this is a completely different defense. Go back and watch the Chargers game versus them. They had all sorts of things. Everyone um, on the defensive side of the ball for the Minnesota Vikings, they're staring at Justin Fields. Go back and look at it. Every single one. So it's a read through the quarterback cover zero. So they're route reading routes, right? So as soon as number two breaks out, this corner sits and the safety goes over top for the running back. Well, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case at all. The running back just sat down. I've never seen that play concept before, unless they have something that I don't know. But to me, it looked like he should have gone outside. How dare Chase Daniel Daniel consider the possibility that DJ Moore ran the wrong route? No. That was really good stuff from Chase Daniel and the chaos right from the beginning for the Bears. They did not do a good job on the pressure and Chase Daniel, who is terrific at breaking down tape, can confirm that for us. Last thing, I have not heard this cut. Chase Daniel, I've always been curious because he was the backup for Mitch Trubisky in the Trubisky years. So, and he always like was great. He he was like a coach. He was unbelievable with the media. He would we would just ask him questions about Mitch Trubisky, quite frankly, unless he was playing. So. I want to hear what he has to say about Mitch and why it didn't work out. Let's see what he says here. But why didn't it work out with Mitch? Well, that's a that's a whole nother show that we don't have time for today. <laughs> we, got, we have plenty here. of time, actually. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, listen, listen. I, I I thought Mitch, um, you know, coming into the league, um, in my first year with him, with the year we went twelve and four, I thought he played outstanding. I thought that Nagy got him to play. Um, up to his ability and to and to bring his level of play um, really high up, right? And then in 2019, we sort of took that regression step back, and 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 honestly, I blame that 2019 on. And you're seeing it. This is a good topic because you're seeing it in today's NFL. There's starters that are playing in the league that are banged up. That year, Mitch Trubisky, his shoulder, he probably should have had sort like it was bad, dude. Like the dude had no. Um, like range of motion whatsoever, ended up having surgery. I know it's his left shoulder, but you look at last night's game, okay? Justin Herbert versus Cowboys. I thought Justin Herbert probably played um, not his worst game, but close to it in terms of accuracy throwing the football. Yeah. It was his, it's his left finger, okay? It's his left finger. People are like, that has nothing to do with throwing the football. Did you see how many times he was landing like this or barely trying or just trying to protect that hand? I'm telling you, hmm. whether it's mentally, emotionally, psychologically, it has something to do with your psyche. All right. I mean, that's not exactly the answer. I'd like to hear the longer longer version of that. I'd love to hear the, uh, you know, that's another whole show. I want to hear that version of what happened with Trubisky. Yeah, we don't even know what happened with him, and we're still working on Justin Fields. Um, and we're going to find out, hopefully, we're going to learn more about Justin Fields very soon in terms of how long he is going to be out with a dislocated right thumb. My guess is, honestly, just from things that I'm hearing, um, that my prediction is, this is my prediction, Justin Fields is going to miss two games. We'll see if I'm right. Um, I'm going on an educated guess, though, with that, and uh, we shall see. Hopefully, we'll find out in short 
reporter. That's it for today on The Daily Score. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Ray Diaz for producing the show. I'm Mark Grody, and I will talk to you later.